please join me in welcoming the group CEO of Lee and Fung, Spencer Fung. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope you are not too, uh, uh, didn't have too much food at lunch because this is always the most difficult session to be in. Uh, it's after lunch. Anyways, uh, my name is Spencer Fung, and I'm the group CEO of Li and Fung, uh, a global supply chain and sourcing company based out of uh, Hong Kong. Um, I'd like to first thank Anil and the team for organizing such a great event. I'm very excited to be here. It's my first time at Shop Talk and first time in uh, Copenhagen, so I'm very excited. A couple months ago, um, my mentor told me something that I'd like to share with you. He told me that, you know, Spencer, I see that your company is trying to transform, you know, to create the supply chain of the future, to become more digital, and everybody is talking about similar things. And he said that, you know, even if you are faster than your competitors, even if you're faster than a lot of people in your industry, that's not good enough, right? Even if you're doing better, because the environment is actually moving faster than our industry. As you know, um, whoever has in, been in retail for a long time, you know, the retail industry has grown a lot in the last 30, 40 years. And for the most part, you know, things have been well. There's a lot of margin going around. You know, a lot of companies have been very successful. But for the most part, if you compare the whole retail value chain, all along the value chain, right, all the way from the consumer, the retailer, all the way back to the supply chain, let's say all the way down to, let's say, uh, the cotton fields, right? This is the type of products that we deal with, uh, uh, which is apparel. Um, it's actually quite a slow industry. Basically, you know, if you're in the industry, you feel like, you know, you're racing uh, with uh, a lot of different slower players. For example, our company is a slow-moving company. You know, I feel like I'm a turtle, sort of racing against other turtles. Being the fastest turtle actually doesn't really help you in the long run. At the end of the day, there's another race actually going on on the other side, that is the race of the rabbits. Right? The ultimate question is, can you be as fast as the rabbits? Right? This is something that we're grappling with as a company. As we move along our transformation journey, we're moving faster and faster. It seems to work. But ev eventually, you have to race with the rabbits. So keep this in mind as I uh, go along. So a little bit of background about myself. Uh, I'm from Hong Kong, so I'm one of the guys representing Asia. Uh, very happy to be here. I grew up in Hong Kong in the US. I started my career as a CPA, as an accountant, a very unlikely uh, profession in the retail space, and then I went into uh, e-commerce in Silicon Valley as an entrepreneur. Then I joined my family company, Li and Fung, which is a uh, company that is 111 years old, and now we connect 8,000 retailers uh, to 15,000 suppliers all around the world. And Li and Fung is part of the Fung Group. So the Fung Group on the upper right has a supply chain, which is Li and Fung. That's what I do, sourcing and logistics for global customers, retailers. And then we have a phone retailing group, which is in Asia, uh, that has over 3,500 points of sale across a whole dozen of brands uh, in China and also beyond, in ASEAN. We have a distribution business where we uh, have brands, uh, global brands, we call it, uh, where we license over 350 brands all around the world, and we distribute that uh, to major retailers. We have a research team, uh, some of them are sitting here today, uh, that focuses on global retail distribution, supply chain, and technology. And there's Fung Academy, uh, where we work with uh, leading institutions like Harvard, MIT, Stanford, uh, and so on, uh, to um, educate our leaders. Then we have a foundation, uh, and also um, we have a phone capital, uh, actually our colleagues are also here, uh, that looks at investment in retail and supply chain technology companies. Company is 111 years old, started by my great-grandfather. Uh, I'm the fourth generation, um, so it's been a long time. Uh, we started as a China, uh, Canton-based Chinese trader. Then we became a Hong Kong-based exporter uh, because China uh, became communist and uh, the whole family and company moved to Hong Kong. Um, then regional competition started and we started becoming a regional company. And then uh, we became a multinational company uh, afterwards. Uh, today, uh, we have 22,000 employees, 250 offices in 40 countries, and we connect thousands of retailers uh, in more than 100 countries to tens of thousands of suppliers around the world in 60 countries. Uh, this is a snapshot of where, uh, where we're based uh, as a company. Um, you know, I, I won't go into the details of that. 
And the business that we're in is really the entire supply chain, going from consumer, an idea, designing a product, developing a product, finding the raw materials, um, all the way through uh, you know, uh, to delivering to the stores of our customers. So it's, uh, it's quite expensive. You know, what we've seen in the last uh, many years, and especially recently, is that the entire value chain is actually shifting very fast. Most people here are actually in the retail portion of the value chain. Um, if I look at the entire value chain, let's say one end of the spectrum are the consumers. Consumers are becoming almost fully digital now, all around the world, especially in countries like China. You know, because of the WeChat platform, because of social media, and because people really skip the PC generation. Everyone is really, you know, fully digital. Some of the most innovative solutions that I've seen uh, recently in retail actually comes from China. You know, the, uh, you know, using the WeChat platform, using the O2O, uh, which is omni-channel solutions. Now uh, China is becoming, ca becoming a cashless society, right? A couple months ago, I went to China, and I pulled out a couple of hundred uh, yuan notes, and I got laughed at. You know, people were asking me, why do you have notes in there, right? If you're an ATM machine maker in China, what do you think your future is going to be like? Right? There's a lot of, uh, actually, advancement and innovation and also disruption uh, in that space. And globally, the consumers are like that. If you move one step back, that's the retailers and the brands. Most of the retailers and the brands are trying to get digital fast. And of course, you have the digital natives like Amazon, Alibaba, and so on, which is leading the charge. But uh, most other retailers are trying to catch up with the whole retail revolution. And there's sort of certain speeds and degrees of um, uh, pace uh, at that, uh, for that. And for the rest of the supply chain, for whatever reason, especially in apparel and hot, and hot lines, the whole value chain is actually very analog. So the space that we play in today across the world, working with 15,000 suppliers in 60 different countries, it's actually quite analog. Right? If you think about that, you know, it's, it's actually you know, in the world that is becoming fully digital, you know, this analog world has to become digital. So our thought process is that no matter whether we do it or not, somebody is going to digitalize the entire supply chain in one, uh, someday. So we would like to be that company, actually, to digitalize the entire supply chain, to create the supply chain of the future, if you will. Because we think that, you know, once every, when, once, um, we've seen it in the consumer space and other industry, once you digitize uh, a process, the value sort of equation changes. Either the value collapses down to zero because something was being automated, or shifts upstream to another player, or downstream to another player. You know, usually disruption occurs. And this is what um, many companies, actually not just uh, ourselves, but every company has to look at that. When your space is being digitalized, what's going to happen to you? Right, so we would like to be the first company to digitalize uh, at scale the entire supply chain so that we know what the disruption is going to be. We would rather be the company to disrupt ourselves rather than having somebody else disrupt us. And also, once you digitalize a, um, a process, basically it becomes a data game. If you look at companies like Google, Airbnb, Uber, and so on, on the surface, they're actually doing something else. Right? But underneath it is all a, a war of data. It's competition of data. Right? It's all about analytics and AI and algorithms and so on. I believe that our industry at, uh, at some point will become a data sort of a, a game as well. At the moment, you know, our business, uh, we do about $17 billion of business. If you translate that into retail, like a, a GMV a figure, it's about $100 billion. That's how much data we have in the supply chain. We would love to use that uh, amount of data to see what other new services we can provide to our customers. Um, and we want to digitalize more and more processes within the supply chain. So that's our sort of um, uh, aspiration. So that's the uh, shifting uh, um, of the value chain. Now, if you zoom in into the supply chain part, and our supply chain goes all the way back to the cotton fields, right? all the way until the consumer. For the last 40 years, our industry has been chasing lower and lower costs every year. Right? If you, if you uh, talk to any retail buyers who have gone to the Far East or anywhere for sourcing, every single year they would go to the supply in the last 40 years and say, I want 5% cheaper. Right? Every year is sort of like that. So we went into a phase of globalization of, uh, of supply chain uh, because of many different things, because of the multi-fiber agreement uh, that sort of um, made the, uh, that put uh, du duties and, uh, and quotas on the different countries, which unleveled the playing field, which caused the whole production of apparel spread all across the, across the world. Um, it is also abundant and availability of labor, cheap labor, like in places like Asia and so on. That kind of let the sort of drive of, um, of low-cost sourcing. So that went on for 40 years. Um, 
I remember my uh, uncle told me a story. When he was in Hong Kong doing uh, supply chain in the 70s, everything was going well. And then uh, Taiwan started opening up. And then Hong Kong became more expensive. And then so he went to Taiwan, set up an office there, started sourcing products there. And then three years later, the Taiwanese office manager and say, Mr. Fung, we're finished here. We're too, we're too expensive. So we moved to Korea. And then three years later, the Korean uh, general manager said the same thing to my uncle. Mr. Fung, I don't know why we're here, because we're too expensive. We're finished. Now the Chinese have taken over. And then the Bangladeshis, and so on, and so on, and so on. So that kind of went on for a long time. So supply chains were really optimized for cost for the last 40 years. And that also dragged on the time that it's taken, the lead time that it's taken to get a product from idea to the consumer. What we're seeing now is that in the last 12 to 18 months, Almost every single conversation I have with my customer is not about cost, it's about speed. Everything has switched to a speed model. This is the supply chain of the future. In fact, you know, the speed model has been done by the fast fashion uh, companies for a long time. But most other retailers actually did not follow suit because you know, everybody was doing well, so why change? So you know, a typical supply chain for our customer, from idea to store, is about 40 to 50 weeks on average. Right? There's no sort of one size fit all. 40, 50 weeks, it's actually quite long. If you look at the fast fashion players, they're much, much shorter than that. If you look at some of the startup companies that are doing supply chains, it's a few days long. Right? Imagine if you are in a company where your supply chain is 40 to 50 weeks long, and you're actually battling with people who have super fast supply chains. They're very small companies today, but think about the turtle and the rabbit analogy. Right? Are you the turtle or are you the rabbit? And if you're the turtle, how do you compete with a rabbit in the future? Right? And if you're a rabbit, actually, how do you actually compete with the turtles also in, and, uh, in the future? So these are questions that we're actually uh, looking at right now. And all I can say is that the supply chains of the past, where you optimize for cost, is going to go away slowly. Right? Or actually, it will accelerate. But the supply chains for the future will actually be optimized for speed. Right? If you can actually see an Instagram of, let's say, Taylor Swift wearing a, a pretty red dress, trending over 500,000 uh, or a million hits. And you can actually produce that same uh, product or a similar product within a few days and get it to your consumer. You can be sure that you can sell the product at full price. There's no inventory. There's no markdown, and so on and so on. Right? The entire equation actually changes. So in order to deal with all the changes that's happening in the company, um, you know, Lee and Fung is actually, our goal now is to create the supply chain of the future to help our customers navigate this very disruptive digital economy. At the same time, we want to improve the lives of a billion people. So in order to do that, we're going to work on speed innovation and digitalization. Speed, there are two things, right? You first of all, you have to speed up the supply chain by a lot, right? It cannot be 40, 50 weeks long, definitely not. Right? At most, it's maybe like five, six weeks, right? This is the, this is the standard that you need. Also, we will work on internal speed of the company. As a company, we have 22,000 people spread across uh, 250 locations. Right? We don't move very fast as a company. So our goal uh, for the next few years is to move as fast as a startup. So things that used to take, let's say, 12, 18 months to do, we would like to do it within hours in the future. That's how fast we want it to be. And because the world is moving so fast, you have to innovate. You have to innovate in products so that your customers can actually have um, have differentiated products that you can charge a higher margin for, and you have to innovate in business model. You cannot stop innovating. Even the rabbits of this world have to uh, continuously innovate because everybody is trying to eat everybody else's lunch, and there's so many changes that are happening. And ideas now spring from nothing to billions of dollars within months now. Right? This is how short the disruption cycle is. So that's why any company, including startup companies, has to continue to innovate. And digitalization we talked about, right? The entire world is going to become digitalized. So you either do it first and you find out what's going to happen to you, or you have somebody else do it to you. And of, of which, in that case, you may even lose the whole business. And with digitalization also comes data. And this is what I think the name of many different, uh, the name of the game for many industry will become. It's more like a data game. Um, earlier, Stephen from Westfield uh, was talking about collaboration, collaborating with different partners on data. That's exactly what we're trying to do, which I'll show you in the, in the next few slides. So let me show you a quick video. The world is changing, and we at Lee and Fung are continuously finding innovative ways to adapt to the shifting business landscape. Speed is our top priority. The Lee and Fung Digital Center of Excellence is an innovative platform that digitizes the supply chain from raw materials to production. 
and product development is a core part of our solution. Design approvals, which traditionally take weeks, can now happen within days. Fitting stages can be completed in a matter of hours. The key to speed is our collaboration engine, which connects customers, the supply chain and consumers through a cloud-based platform. With detailed product imaging, designers can easily work on images that highlight fabric, finish, value add, and washes in intricate detail. Our rendering center has world-class equipment and skill sets. The result is a dynamic product development platform with fewer physical samples, faster iterations, and quicker decision-making. We are technology agnostic and offer expertise in different software. We leverage best practices to provide turnkey solutions that can be incorporated into existing merchandising workflows or be used as standalone services. Technology and innovation are changing the way we work at Lee & Fung. We, in turn, are transforming the supply chain and creating new standards in how technology, processes and people work together. We are Lee & Fung. We are the supply chain of the future. Okay, so, you know, our vision of the supply chain of the future looks something like this. You know, traditionally you have retailers, you have logistics providers, you have companies like ourselves, um, then you have suppliers and their suppliers working in an analog supply chain. The future supply chain, first of all, uh, will be fully digital, right? Everything will be digitized, everything will be uh, in data, everything will be connected. Today, the supply chains are not really that connected, especially the systems. It's different company with different systems, with different protocols. We still use phone calls, faxes, emails, Excels to do business, right? Those of you who are in retail, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But the future, I'm sure most of those actually will not exist. Everything will be connected digitally. So we're now um, trying to create an ecosystem of partners that can work in unison together digitally and to collaborate in, uh, in terms of um, uh, workflow, um, you know, in terms of strategy, in terms of data, to link everything up, to form a virtual, let's say, a virtual vertical. So it's not a real vertical because these are different companies, but a virtual vertical that works together. So traditional players will be along this chain. Non-traditional players like uh, software companies, like data companies, consumer product com companies, banks, um, other companies can actually join into this uh, sort of ecosystem so that we can actually provide a much better solution uh, for our customers. Right? In the future, you know, like what I was talking about, if, you, if something is trending on social media, right, you should be able to produce, to be able to approve the production of something immediately within milliseconds and not within days and weeks and months. Right, this is what happens today. Somebody sees something, they tell internal department one, internal department one tells department two and three and four and so on. By the time it gets to the supply chain and you figure out whether there's production capacity, whether there's raw material capacity, you know, the whole trend is gone. Right? This is how fast the world's moving. So in the future, everything has to sort of work in unison. And our ecosystem at the moment reaches about $2.5 trillion of retail sales. And this is what we would like to uh, do um, you know, as, as a company, to actually, you know, uh, leverage our ecosystem and our convening power of $2.5 trillion of retail to actually, um, actually together uh, in unison work with our partners to benefit our uh, ultimate customers, which are the retailers, so that they can actually uh, provide a better solution for their consumers. So, by the way, if, there, if, there's, if, if this ecosystem interests you, please um, you know, send me a LinkedIn if you, if you, if you wish. Now, if you, look at the, um, if you look at the whole world today and the environment, because everything is moving so fast, right? Because everything is actually exponential, right? The biggest question uh, for everyone is, you know, how can I actually continue to innovate? How can I actually continue to disrupt my own business and not let others disrupt us, um, your, your business, and actually survive, right? Our company now is going through the biggest transformation that we've seen in the last 30, 40 years, and it's a big transformation. Right, we're, we're, almost, you know, we're almost turning over every single stone trying to disrupt ourselves and see what would happen if we do this to ourselves. Right, it's like doing an experiment to, to yourself. And, and we want to be the first to find out. Right, this whole transformation, um, the way I describe it to my friends, is like an extreme sport in business. It's very, very difficult. 
it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's very, very scary. Um, it's a little bit dangerous too because you actually, you may find something that would disrupt your entire business model, right? But boy, if you're able to do it, it's hugely gratifying, right? This is what we want to do. So the question for everybody here is, are you a turtle? Are you a rabbit? And if you're a turtle, how do you compete with the rabbits in the future? And if you're a rabbit, actually, how do you become, uh, you know, a faster rabbit? There may be even faster animals out there. And meanwhile, you know, our goal of creating the supply chain of the future um, really is ultimately wanting to become that rabbit. But in the meantime, we're taking one steps at a time, and we're just trying to grow some rabbit ears in the turtle. Thanks.